Hi everyone, welcome back to another week on the Brush by Brandy YouTube channel. This week we're going to be working on these adorable Bombay chests. And I've told you guys before, but I try to pick these up anytime I can find them because they're always super popular. And the cool thing about this one is when I picked it up, I didn't just get one. There's a second one as well. So this is a matching set and they're actually really good size and they were in really good condition. So I was thrilled to work on these. And um, these are a custom order for a customer. She chose this finish that I've done before, but I feel like sometimes seeing it on different pieces, you see the finish differently. And I think this finish suits these pieces beautifully. So we're gonna use kind of a cross hatching technique. We're gonna add in a little bit of metallics for some sparkle in the daylight. Of course, they're not done yet. I still have some hardware to add, but this is all about the details. Um, and it's just a really classic uh, finish that can go in just about any decor and it suits the curves of these pieces perfectly. So stick around for a fun finish. Let's get started. Here's where I started on these two pieces. As I said, they started out in really good condition. So I started out by removing all of the hardware and then giving them a really good cleaning. There wasn't much damage or anything for me to sand out. So once I had that all done, I was ready to go ahead and lay on some primer. I'm using primer on these because they are made of pine and pine is notorious for bleeding. It has these rich wood knots and the oils in the knots can have a tendency to seep through your paint over time and cause discoloration. And so to prevent that, I'm gonna put on a coat of this primer. This is Wiseal Primer in light gray and it's a stain blocker and a gripping primer in one. And so it's gonna do double duty and help my paint to adhere uh, extra well and also prevent that yellowing from coming through my paint over time. This primer I also try to use as an asset in my paint finish. So this is actually also going to be the base layer of my paint finish. This is going to peek through and you're going to see little hints of this light gray in my final finish peeking through. I'm using, using a nice synthetic bristle brush and I'm brushing on my primer in nice, long, even linear strokes. This is the base for my paint and even though it's going to have a lightly textured finish, I want to keep this as clean as possible so that my overall paint finish goes on as clean as possible. This is a matching set, so everything I do on this, I'm actually gonna be doing times two, but I also did something different with this set, and I primed about a month worth of furniture all in one night. So I ended up cleaning pieces in bulk and then going ahead and just priming them all together, and this ended up saving me time in the long run because I was able to come out for the next several weeks and just have all of my pieces ready for paint. I think we all hate the step of prepping furniture pieces and so I did find that doing them in bulk actually made a big difference for me. It's something I'm going to try to do whenever I can. I did make sure to prime all of my drawer edges and around the body as well and here is where I landed with two coats of primer on both of my pieces. I'm ready to start with my paint technique. My first step on this piece is going to be a wash of paint. And what a wash is, is I'm just gonna add some water to my surface. Uh, there's different options for doing a color wash. You can also dilute your paint into a bowl, but I prefer to put some water onto the surface and then just brush it into my paint. I end up with a very, very thin layer of paint. I'm gonna brush my thin layer of paint over the entire body of my piece, and that's gonna give me my color wash. I'm gonna work in small areas because I wanna keep the paint nice and wet. And so I did about a third of my piece and then I'm just gonna come with a rag and wipe it back in long, even linear strokes that go all the way down the front of my piece. This is gonna create sort of a strie effect, which is the streakiness in the paint itself. And that's gonna be my base layer of paint. I've done this paint finish several times. Um, I'm doing it with a different brand this time, but it's very versatile. And I also found that doing it over and over again, I start to find little tips and tricks that make it easier each time because it does have a lot of brush strokes. It's a very detailed finish. And doing this as a color wash instead of doing individual brush strokes saves a lot of time. Just the color wash itself, the dark gray color over the light gray uh, is a really cool paint finish. So just this, it could be a paint finish on its own, just creating that streaky finish by wiping away your diluted paint. So I'm on the last third across the front of my piece and I'm gonna repeat the same process by brushing on that diluted coat of paint. A lot of water on my surface. My primer's nice and dry so I don't have to worry about disturbing that. And then I brush my paint into all that water. Once I've got that nice thin layer, wipe it back using a dry clean rag. When I'm wiping my paint back with the rag, I actually kind of place my fingers inside of it so it creates more of a streaky effect. I also wad the rag up a little bit so it's uneven because I do want to make sure that I create streaking in the paint. You can see it up close here. That's the effect that I want. 
Each layer in this paint finish is gonna have contrast between the layer underneath. So I did a light layer first, which was my light gray. Then I did a dark. Now I'm gonna go back and do a light. And that's because I wanna show the contrast in between each layer of paint. So I'm coming back with a light blue and just with a very soft hand and a fairly dry brush, I'm gonna whisk some brush strokes in a cross hatching pattern. So I'm gonna go horizontal and then I'm gonna come back and do a little vertical to create this strie effect. My color wash I laid off in vertical strokes, so my first strokes on this coat are going to be horizontal. Again, I want that contrast in between each coat. There's very little paint on my brush, and these are very light brush strokes, so it actually dries pretty quickly, so I can come back and layer the strokes over each other without disturbing the one underneath. This is a nice up close view here and you can really start seeing the randomness in the brush strokes. My next color, again focusing on the contrast, I'm going to come back with this light beige. This is called Restoration and it's just going to be some contrast with the layer underneath. I'm doing that cross hatching pattern with very light and dry brush strokes. The key for this technique is going to be the repetition in the brush strokes and the overall layering. Each layer adds a little bit of depth and interest so you're just going to keep going and layering those brush strokes up. Here is where I landed with all of my layered brush strokes. You can see how much texture and interest it has, but I wanna go ahead and tone this down a little bit. So what I'm gonna add is a color wash over the top. So I'm coming back with my same light blue. This is a duck egg blue, and I'm gonna thin this out quite a bit and just do a wash over the top of it. The wash is gonna to tone down the colors underneath, but you're still gonna see them peeking through. It also serves to unify all of those different colors that we layered underneath and give them the same tone over top. I do let my color wash be slightly thinner in some places and thicker in others. That's because I still want to keep the same basic overall unevenness of this paint finish. There is interest in the randomness of it too. But this color wash isn't my final step. Once I've got a basic even color wash over the top of it in the duck egg blue, I'm actually going to add a little bit of a champagne metallic in there as well. And I'm saving my metallic until the very last step because if I continue to do layers over the top, I'm going to lose the metallic sheen and I really want to make sure that's seen. So I'm going to leave that to my last layer and I'm just going to streak in with that cross hatching pattern and a little bit of water, some thin layers of metallic over the top of my duck egg blue. I really focused my metallic on areas that would catch the light. So areas that were a little more prominent, some corners of the drawer, and then of course that nice round bow front where my keyholes are gonna go back on, around the hardware a little bit. I just want that shimmery metallic to catch the light in just the right places.
Once my paint is nice and dry, I'm going to come back and do a little bit of shading with waxes. I'm just using a natural bristle artist brush and I'm going to run it on along all of the detailed crevices on this piece. Once I've got all of that outlined in some black wax, I'm going to come back with a softer brush and I'm going to smudge it out into the surface of my finish. If you're a little nervous about using black wax on your piece, I would recommend it sealing with it with a clear coat before you start this process. I am doing it over the surface of raw paint, and that's just because after time I've gotten comfortable putting black waxes on raw paint, but doing a clear coat underneath will give you more control of your black wax. Here I'm just using a soft fluffy wax brush and I'm just smudging it out and I don't wash this brush in between uses and so each time I go back to it, it has a little more wax into it and that's exactly what I want. It just gives me a little bit of wax on the surface of the brush. Um, this takes very little wax and then I'm going to buff away any excess so I will seal over the top of this because it's so little wax that I'm using on the piece. In addition to the shading of waxes that I'm doing on the side, I also did some on the front. And on the front, I chose to do just the corners of the drawers, a little bit around where my hardware would go, around the keyholes, um, places that I sort of want to emphasize with a little bit of the dark shading. Once my black wax is done, I came back with a little bit of gold decor wax. Um, this is by Redesign with Prima. This color is called Eternal. And I added a little bit of it just onto the carvings of the piece and also onto my hardware. Um, my hardware had already been cleaned with vinegar and water, um, but I just wanted to shine it up a little bit. And so I just hit the high points with some of that gilding wax. Now my piece is ready for some clear coat and I'm spraying Wiseal varnish in satin and I'm just going to do two coats over the entire body of this piece. Now I felt like I wanted to do something a little bit special on the inside of this and so I'm using this stencil from Redesign with Prima and a little bit of spray adhesive. This is Super 77 spray adhesive from 3M. Then I'm going to come back with the Wiseal one and a half inch round brush and I'm just going to lightly brush a coat of the vintage duck egg into this stencil. This is going to peek out every time you open those drawer sides you'll see just a little bit of the paint. It is optional whether you want to seal this paint. If I was going to seal it on the drawer sides I would use a little bit of Wiseal furniture salve and that would add a little bit of scent to my drawers and also seal this paint up. One thing you always want to be cautious of when you're adding decoration to the drawer size is you want to make sure that these are not going to rub the body of your piece. Now these drawers sat inside the body so I didn't have to worry about that but always make sure you pay attention to that. So here's my finished piece you guys. These are dramatic. They're gorgeous. You can see how this finish really complements the curved pieces especially with those metallic details. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You can find links for everything I use in the description for this post. I'll also add links in there for other pieces I've done in this same finish. If you guys enjoyed this video, you can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, and on my website at brushbybrandy.com.